Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna talk about the all, the ultimate, the only leg day. We got good response when we talked about building the best chest we can and the most efficient way to build a chest. So I read in the comments below, how do you do this? What are your suggestions for leg day building big old tree trunks? Before we dig into the video, do me a favor, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, give this video a thumbs up. Let's see if we can reach 1,000 thumbs in the sky. And also, do me a favor, comment below what topics or videos you want me to cover in upcoming videos. New videos every Monday and Thursday. New podcast, iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. 50% facts. We take a singular topic, me and the one and only Jim McD, break it down the best we can. Then at the end of the podcast, we call in an expert, give you the ultimate answer to that question. And also, I'm Twitch streaming every single day. Sound like Mike on Twitch. Check it out. Let's dig in. So I've talked about this multiple times in the past that volume is the biggest indicator for building strength and building muscle, right? When we're talking about how much tonnage, how much work we do day in, day out, week in, week out, month out, year out, overall volume, sets times reps times weight, plus a calorie surplus, meaning we eat more calories than we need to maintain our body weight. That's how we're gonna build size, that's how we're gonna build mass, and that's how we're gonna build muscle. Mixed in with good hydration and a lot of sleep is gonna be overall best. Now the biggest difference between strength training, trying to build your one rep max, weightlifting, powerlifting, whatever it is, trying to get stronger, and bodybuilding or training for aesthetics, trying to look better, the only main differences are Exercise variation and perhaps how many exercises you do. Hypothetically speaking, if you're a power lifter, you could become very, very good at power lifting with just the squat, bench, and deadlift. Now, you do risk some weak points um, that may end up aggravating some injuries or getting a little bit of wear and tear. It may not be optimal, but you can be really good at squat, bench, dead, and get strong. With bodybuilding, it's highly likely that you need a larger pool of tools, a larger pool of exercise variation to get better. Now, we're talking about building muscle they do go hand in hand because we want progressive overload. What we want is to build sets, reps, and that load over time. Again, more volume will build more strength and more size. So when we start with leg training, we mostly want to start out with most bang for your buck. What exercise hits the most amount of your legs, allows you to lift the most amount of weight because the more weight that we can lift, the more we can progress. If I'm doing a pinky curl, my little pinky can only lift like, I don't know, 12 ounces. So for me to progress with my pinky, because it's such a little muscle, it's gonna take a lot of time. I'm gonna lift 12 ounces then for 10 reps, then maybe 12 ounces for 10 and a half reps, then 11 reps, then maybe I can do 13 ounces. But if I can squat 400 pounds, I can do sets of five with 315, then I can do sets of six with 320, you know, uh, more sets, more reps, weekly progression. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I suggest starting out with is finding an exercise, a big compound exercise that fits good for your body and what you enjoy. Um, number one best I think would be the back squat. Uh, another good complement to the back squat is maybe a front squat, a pause squat, or if you don't enjoy those movements, a leg press will do. Maybe even a Bulgarian split squat. Um, all these movements allow you to progressively overload, allow you to use a lot of tonnage, a lot of volume, and a large part of your leg. You're basically using every muscle from your glutes down. And that's what we're aiming for. So what I suggest there is starting out with the majority of your workout, maybe 50 to 60, 75% of your workout focused in on that movement so you can handle the most amount of weight, handle the most amount of volume, and do the most stimulus to your legs as you can. Rep ranges, if you're squatting multiple times a week or doing legs multiple times a week, you can vary those rep ranges, commonly known as daily undulating periodization, where basically one day a week you focus a little bit more on strength, right? Or say we have squat workout A and squat workout B. Squat workout A would maybe be uh, three to five sets of anywhere from three to six reps. It's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit less reps, and you're getting in that strength training. Where extra set leg day B, you'll also be squatting, but now we're gonna do three sets of maybe six to 10 reps. A little bit lighter and a little bit more reps. We're gonna stimulate different muscle fibers, and we're also gonna condition ourselves in different rep ranges. One a little bit strength, one a little bit strength endurance. Second exercise, if we're gonna break this down nice and simple, what I think best for legs is a reverse lunge. Um, now any lunge will do, walking lunges are great, 
Um, there's many different kinds. Again, a Bulgarian split squat would be great. I think the reverse lunge is a great uh, movement for the quadricep itself. You're still doing a compound movement. You're working a large part of your leg, hamstrings, glutes, calves are all still involved. It's easy to load. I prefer a kettlebell, but you can do dumbbells. You can do a barbell across your back. And I also think it adds a little bit of athleticism, coordination, and balance if you're doing a reverse walking lunge, if y'all trying to be some athlete. And I think adding any type of balance coordination is highly beneficial, not only for your mind, but for your body. And it works a little bit extra in your calves, although minuscule, I think it's worth it overall. Last movement would be some type of hamstring movement. I believe the RDL, Romanian deadlift, is a great movement. Again, dumbbells, barbells, or kettlebells, but I think the barbell in particular is the best. I think you can do higher rep ranges. You can really feel your hammies and glutes working. If we got the same setup for workout A and workout B, and we're using the reverse lunge for our second movement, again, it focuses in on our entire leg, but a little extra on the quadricep, again, if we're doing that leg extension on the reverse. Workout A might be uh, three sets of six to eight, a little bit heavier load, and then workout B might be maybe 10 to even 15 reps, three sets, a little bit lighter load. And what we try to do, again, week to week, month to month, is progress, and not only by adding load, but we can do an extra set, or we can do an extra rep as needed. Once you start to get stronger and you've been training for a very long time, you can't just add five pounds every week to these movements. So you'll have to add a set, maybe a rep, and progress very slowly. Incremental progress is still progress, my friends. <laughs> now that we did our main compound movement, we did a little bit of quadricep, but still another compound movement, a little bit of an isolation movement is the RDL, the Romania deadlift. I think it's a great movement exercise selection to really accentuate the hamstrings and the glutes. I prefer a barbell, but you can use it with dumbbells. Um, you can also use it with kettlebells, a machine. Some people do it on the cable, uh, but I think the barbell, you can really load this movement up if you keep your back nice and neutral and really focus on pushing back into your hips, uh, keeping your shoulders directly over the bar, knees slightly hinged. Uh, and I like to really load it up. Back when I was deadlifting really, really heavy, I was load these things up with 315, 365, 405. Again, if we're working with the workout A and the workout B, I think the first one, a little bit heavier, sets a six to eight. And the second workout, workout B, three, three to five sets, anywhere from 10 to even 15, and really feel a burn on that guy working our muscle endurance. Last but not least, you can't forget it. My friend up in the north, winter is coming, Omar Isaf, the one and only, the king of the calves, the king of the cows, the king of the bulls. You can't end a workout without doing a little bit of calves involved. Now, if it's, if it's purely aesthetic goals and you want to balance symmetrical physique, calves are going to be necessary for entirety of athletic movement. They are a small muscle, but it is smart to train them if you're a runner, sprinter, basketball player, etc. Do they need the stimulus? that all the rest of our muscles get. Maybe not because you do use them a lot when you're running, jumping, etc., on their own and they're constantly in flexion themselves when you're standing, walking, etc. But, um, you know, a couple sets of seated calf raises, real slow controlled, relaxed at the bottom, allow that stretch to kind of dissipate. We have a very elastic Achilles heel. It's very, or Achilles tendon. It's very strong and it's really wound up. So you want that thing to relax and then control it yourself to contract. Control the movement both ways. Three sets of maybe 15, then some standing calf raises is three to 20, similar motion. Don't bounce up and down. You see a lot of guys in there doing freaking jumping jack, jump rope on the machine itself. Really slow and control that movement. Again, kind of relax at the bottom in that flex position. Bada boom, bada bing. I personally like to do a little bit of core at the end of a workout sometimes it just feels good to get blood into my abs again for aesthetic reasons and mental reasons uh, you can get great ab development just by doing compound movements like lunges uh, and squats themselves and when you get lean enough those abs will show but i love a little bit of legging hanging leg raises some cable crunches or machine crunches um, it just feels good for me and then if you're a little bit more advanced some windmills on the barbell trying to pretend like I'm a gymnast going to the 2024 Olympic Games, 2020, whatever year it might be. Uh, but that's my leg routine for some girthy tree trunks. Comment below what you guys want me to cover next. I do appreciate you. Silent Mike, I'm out of here. Catch you in the next one.